This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, in this case I will be demonstrating two unique issues which are not very common but we get to see them occasionally. So the first issue, he has deep set eyes. It felt like the eyeball is sitting inside a deep well. Intraoperative pulling of the fluid is the problem which I am going to face in this eye. We can see the shadows of the lids over the eyeball. Temporal incisions are usually better in such eyes and by turning head a little towards the surgeon, the pulling of the fluid can be minimized. And I perform most of my surgeries with the temporal incision itself. But with this much of a deep set eyes, I need something extra. So in such situations, I prefer to use a suction pump attached to a sterile tube to keep the area clear. This greatly helps me in seeing well. Please do check this video out on how to assemble this suction device. As a routine, the surgery was planned under topical anesthesia. But there is a second issue. The patient has this uncontrolled Bell's phenomenon. He just keeps looking up. Repeated requests are not helping. I wait for a minute hoping that it will settle down. And in some patients it usually does but in this case it did not. So during surgery we would always want the eyes to be looking straight ahead into the microscope light. That's the plane the eyeball has to be always while undergoing surgery. But here the eyeball is just turned up and it's impossible to continue the surgery. So how do we go about in this situation? So what is the trick here? Well, let's see the my next option in such patients. In the inferior middle quadrant, 1 ml of lignocaine is injected in the subtenon space. Now, using a cotton bud, the eyeball is turned down and held in this position for about half a minute. Let's see whether this technique works. Time's up. Release the cotton bud. The eyeball is now centrally placed and is definitely looking better. The eyeball is looking straight ahead now. Well, this technique has worked for me many times in such situations. And do try it out and let me know whether it works for you. So let's begin the surgery. As I'm doing the rexus, there is this point where the edge of the forceps teeth just touches the anticapsule, resulting in a cut. Thankfully, it did not go out of control. But this can be a potential weak area, so we need to keep an eye on it. Well, this happened because the anticapsule in this case was very fragile because the cataract was very long standing and such capsules are vulnerable for tear. for FECO. Small central trench is made to get access to the core of the nucleus. The vertical chop is begun. Cracking the posterior plate seems a little bit challenging. During lateral separation maneuvers, I am careful not to impinge any stress on the rexus margin 
by moving the instruments much more wider since there is a potential weak area in the rexus which can just get torn by stretching careful division of the fragments is continued followed by emulsification of these fragments at the pupillary plane A small coronal epithelial defect is noted. Can't really trace it out when it actually happened. The intraocular lens is placed into the bag, the wounds are hydrated. The eye is patched so that the epithelial defect heals faster. That's it, the case is done. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.